Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. I'm sure with the title of the biggest repot ever, most people envisage the um, giant brassier. Correct. But, bit of a trick. I'm not sure I should be doing this relatively late in the day. But if I put it off, it could get dragged on for some time. So first thing I'm going to do is get that out of the way. Why, you ask, if you're going to repot it? Yes, I'm going to repot it, but... I'm also going to repot that. That. That, despite it being in flower, there's a reason. Flowering is being overridden. That, and what you'd expect, my Soto Annum, because I did say I was going to do that. And I also bought out into the kitchen, so I don't forget, my hibiki. That can't possibly need a repot, can it? I haven't had it long. But what it does need is the pot ventilating. Because the roots are all concentrated around the top of the pot, which is drying quite quickly, I'm having to water it quite often. So this is starting to get soggy now. It's never drying out. So we need the holes put in the pot with the old, uh, what you call it, soldering iron. But what I did notice this morning when I picked it up, I'm going to have to watch my screen now. On the end of my finger there, or on the end of my, no, I can't get it, can I? There, on the end of my thumb, that's a spike. And it's another spike coming out of the top of a pseudo bulb. This is starting to get me worried about what I've bought here. Because my previous hibiki and other people's hibikis that I've seen tend to produce clusters from the spike from the canes part way up. Not straight out of the top. Anyway, that's out here so that I don't forget it, because that, that's just a two minute job basically, make some holes in the pot. But um, this is far too much to repot in one session I suspect, so it will be two sessions. But we have a common denominator here that's a trifle worrying depending. Um, right, let's get going. This is a get everything out of the pot session basically. Um, this is my little Dendrobium harveyanum that hasn't done anything for about a year now. I made the mistake of watering it. So we haven't got a good root system. We do have some, but it hasn't put anything out the top for a very long time. So as far as I'm concerned, there's something wrong with that. Now I'm just going to have to move some stuff again, because as I pick these up and talk about them, I want to empty them out of the pot. And obviously I don't want the ones that I'm not doing yet in the way. <laughs> right, start again. So, why isn't this growing? I'll get on to it. But first job is get it out of the pot. Now that's incredibly wet on the grounds that, as I said, I've just watered it. Um, what I'm looking for is growing roots. See, now I've got a lovely strong root coming out there, and then the end's gone. So it was growing, it should have gone round and round the bottom of the pot and carried on growing really, but it didn't, it stopped. And I've not had a new growth off of this plant for a very, very long time. Therein lies the reason. Now I'm going to explain why all of these plants have been selected. They've all been selected for virtually the same reason. The reason is they were all potted using some small bark and a certain batch of sphagnum moss. Why do I say a certain batch? Because that batch is worrying me. It's quite a while ago now. I'm not using it anymore. It's long since been used up. But obviously over a period of time it did get used. Right. So we have a root system. Why won't you grow? Possibly two reasons. I believe that as I can see new root tips dying back, that media is too acidic. I'll 
get on to my logic for the reasoning in a minute. Let's get a few more out of their pots. Now this one is so just won't grow. Had a really bad slug attack and took some chunks out of the pseudo bulbs. And um, again, I've made the mistake of watering that one as well, which means you've got some soggy media. And this is my Nelly Isla Red Velvet. Now it is pushing a new growth out and it has got some roots in the pot. But again, it's not growing as well as it should be. And these roots are not progressing as well as they should be. They have grown in the past and stopped. And there's no active root growth down here. This is all existing roots with nothing progressing. And again, small bark and that particular sphagnum moss. The plant's not happy. Plant not happy. And the environment, as far as you know, is reasonable for the type of plant, not way offline. You know, you're not growing it in a hot, steamy jungle environment when it's a cold grower or anything silly like that. Um, no other reason than below ground. And the reason I've hooked this one out today is that it does have a new growth. New growth equals new roots soon. Very soon, I hope. New roots into new media, put strength back into the plant. That's the theory. So that's another one. Right. Now this is my Shelob Tolkien. This went downhill at Mulvern last year. Similar symptoms. We have roots, yeah? They're not growing. They're just sitting there and they're starting to get a bit brown looking. Yeah? There's a few new ones here. Now what's happened above ground is we've got two growths, one of which is in bloom. Forget that bit. What's happening to the roots? Look at the bottom of those roots as they hit the media. They're just turning brown and stopping. They were okay when they were in the air, but when they touched the media, they stopped growing and went brown. Quite a bit of small bark here. Makes me wonder why with an oncidium. And in this case, quite a large pot, which I don't normally do now. So this may have been in its pot a while. I've got a feeling it's two plants. Yes, it is. So we're, look, we're looking at two plants as well. Um, I don't normally do that, but um, in some cases I do. Um, this is good in a way that it does it, that it is two plants. Now, looking at this, we have a rhizome that's crept along with reasonable sized gaps, which means it's a climber, and I can see a couple of new roots that haven't lost their tip yet but most of them that touch that media have. Now these are old tired roots. I don't think they're actually dead but they're not actively growing and these up here are dead. These are long gone but that back bulb's going to come off. Yeah, So that's coming off that will leave us three bulbs. The leaves on the back here too much light last year that would have been the pseudo bulb that went to Malvern with its spike. Not a full size pseudo bulb by any means. Compare it with the previous one and the one before that. Getting smaller all the time. And although I've lost my records, I know for a fact this has been in the pot a fair while. Other piece, minus stick, we don't want stick. Now this growth didn't grow at all well, it distorted. Again, this is the growth that went to Malvern with its spike. And it, the plant came back from Malvern, well the two plants as it happens, came back from Malvern far from happy and it went downhill from that point. This pseudo bulb new growth grew but it's distorted, it's wonky. It's highly unlikely to bloom as a consequence. New roots are coming out and failing. Most of those roots are dead or not very good. So that's that one. Ooh. Quick fire session this. Well at least it is getting them out of the pot. <laughs> Won't be putting them back in. Um, which might have to be several parts. 
Now this is my little Oncidium Twinkle Yellow, which last time I repotted it, part of it went on the um, on a mount, a couple of little bits, and some went in here. And you might think, well that one's okay, look at the new growths. Yeah, look at the size of the new growths. They are not progressing properly. But they're there, we've got one there, two little ones down, or one little one down there, and a new one just starting. The potential for new roots. Roots down in the pot, you might think, what the hell's wrong with that? Not one of those roots is growing. Nothing is growing. It's stopped. Good job it's in a clear pot, isn't it? And here we go again. Small bark and a fair bit of moss. Now I'll tell you straight away at this point, when these, go these that are in this environment, they ain't going back in it. I am going mossless as best as I can as I get round to repotting and replacing the moss with perlite and charcoal. Which probably means I'm going to have to buy some more charcoal because I've only got a small bag. But this is my theory now because the moss and bark is going over too quick. Far too quick. They should be able to stay in their pots longer than this and they're not. So uh, again, we've got some tired roots. They're not dead and it's a branching root system. So I won't take many of those roots off. They just need fresh media. They just need something that they're happy in. And I believe, I could do a test actually, if I put, in fact I will, I'll do it now. Um, let's do a little experiment. I'm just gonna take some of this at random Some bigger bits in as well. So I've got an, that's an assortment of media. Now what I'm going to do is pour some RO water in it, which we know has a pH of seven or thereabouts. It's certainly not going to be far off, and I'm going to leave that to soak for an hour, and then I'm going to get both the TDS meter, but more importantly the pH meter on it. So we'll put that to one side and try not to get it muddled up with our wine, which has already got some moss. Oh, luckily, it's, I was going to say, I it's got some moss in it, but it's on the outside of the glass. Right, so are you seeing the pattern now? Next one. This is my Oncidium Sweet Sugar which I allowed to bloom. Roots going brown, not growing at all, but we do have some new ones coming from this new growth. Small bark moss. roots that have stopped growing and in this case are starting to fail. They're actually starting to die. We may have got this one just in time. Now the new growth is putting down some new roots and some of them they're not growing but they haven't failed on this one like this. That's not a failed root its tip is still there and I'm reasonably certain if that got in a media that it actually liked it would grow along with some of these over here. So this one hasn't gone too far. What was this? I've forgotten. That was my sweet sugar, wasn't it? Now this is just an ordinary dancing lady type Oncidium. I could go on the internet now and replace that instantly. Um, but nowadays that would probably cost me 20-25 quid because the price has all gone up recently. Hate to think what they're going to be when we get when we get to the end of this year. We've had so much trouble with this virus thing, rightly so. Everybody's forgotten about the other big deal, haven't they? It's going to come. It's going to come up and bite our proverbial. The year is progressing. We're into July, so we're over halfway. And at the end of this year, unless anything dramatic happens, we're going to leave the EU and. 
the only orchids we're going to have access to are ones that are in this country. And the people who sell the orchids are going to be a bit reluctant to bring them in from the EU if they have to pay all the relevant uh, prices for the paperwork and stuff. Now this one, <laughs> I'm just taking out the pot, it's got no tag. This one is Golden Rialto. Now when I did my video a day or two ago about, um, uh, I what it was called, it wasn't rescue plants, it was, um, oh it was requests, people who asked to see how plants were getting on. Some idiot forgot this one because it had been asked for and I just forgot it. Um, this would be difficult to get again, but I believe I've got it in time. Another common denominator, um, some of these plants did actually get watered before I decided to do this session, but some didn't. That was one. That hasn't been watered for eight days. It's wet. It's not drying. Why is it not drying? Two reasons. Media is holding too much water because it's old and stale. And we haven't had the heat and the plant's not using it. It's not using it because not all of its roots are active. But that is a reasonable root system. We've got good roots over this side. Uh, they've come out this way. We've got a new growth. And we do have a reasonable root system. I really don't want to lose this one. So that, that one's been bought in. That one wasn't really due. But I brought it in with this session on the grounds that if I leave it too much longer, it might go too far. You know, and then, then, we'd, then we may lose it. So that's that one. That's an Odonto Blossom type, that one. Right, now we're getting on to the, getting on to the silly. Uh, Soto Anum next. Oy. This is a biggie. About half of this plant is going in the bin. Shh, don't tell it. It might sulk, because it's already sulking. Could get worse. This weighs a ton. And I doubt if it's plant material that weighs a ton. I suspect it's soggy media. It's not using the media up. Now this did go through a bad time last year, yes, but it's a vigorous type of plant. And quite honestly, it should have picked up by now. The bottom of that pot has got no roots in it and it's soaking wet. Now once upon a time, this had a brilliant root system and some idiot kept letting it dry out when it was in active growth. And that lost me a lot of the root system. See now back here is that root system that we had back then, which has now died, basically. It's gone. This is gone now. This is the back of the plant. This is coming off anyway. But when we get round to the front of the plant, we do have some white roots in amongst this, which is why I wanted to get on with this. There's a lot of this root system is going to have to come off. The trimming of any active roots will cause them to branch on a root system like this, so I'm not worried. But I need to trim this in such a way that I can get it back in a pot. So this one hasn't gone too far. It really smells quite... it smells a little bit of roots. <laughs> planty sort of smell and fausty so the media was probably on its way and I don't know how long this has been in this pot but when it's got live moss growing on the top that I didn't put there it usually indicates it's been there a while now I've got a hassle with this plant because I'm gonna to have to leave that back bulb on simply because the new growth's coming out of it and that one as well but this, a lot of this around the back end is just coming off. You know, things like this, they're coming off. I've got scale on this plant as well. Not too much, I have treated it, but... Uh, so we're, tr we're basically reducing the size of the plant all the time and getting a lot of sheaths off while I'm at it, which is Heidi Holes for scale. So although I haven't finished that, I've still got more work to do on it, you get the general idea of what I'm going to do with it. Sheaths off, back part of the plant off, unless it's got nice bright green leaves on the top of it. And I will get my heavy duty cutters and come round and trim these stumps off where I've just pulled those, those off. This is just so wet. It's not drying out. 
and this is just going to get cut off. So that's that one, that needs a really good haircut. Um, possibly a couple more bulbs to come off, I think that one will. Yep, that will come off without the new growth going. It gives me access to some more sheaths and another chunk to cut off at the base. This little one here is going to come off. But this one's going to have to stay. I reckon if I take that off, yeah, it's got a new growth coming out of it. So that one will have to stay. And this one. Yep, I can get that one off. So I was just doing it gently in case it was attached to that new growth, but it's not. And then cleaning up the base will allow any new roots from any of these new growths to get going. And then this can go in a smaller pot, having had a massive haircut. It's a vigorous plant, it should pick up quite quickly now that it's cleaned up a bit. Hopefully. But it needs to go in a media where it dries a bit quicker and people don't forget to water it as it dries. Right, that's that. Now the bit I'm sure you're all waiting for. Is getting this out. I can't just get this out, I've got to do some uh, work first. I call it work. There's certain parts of our country are, are allowed to call it work. <laughs> but in my part of the world it's work. Not work. Right, we have a shed load of clips holding spikes in place. Stacks of them. We have spike, uh, sorry, stakes the aforementioned. Hmm. Looks a little mouldy at the base of that stake. Uh, right, let's just move around one at a time. Cut the spikes as we go. Nicely prepared with my scissors. I'll get me scissors, shall I? Now again, these were put away sterilised, so I don't need to worry. So spikes off. Tragic though it is, but they were due to come off anyway. The plant, the um, blooms are dying back anyway. Let's make sure I try and get all of these little clips because they're reusable. So are the stakes, even if they, uh, yeah, there's a bit of mould on the base of those stakes. So they, they again, they would be sterilised before they got used again. Moving round, next one. More little clips. It's amazing this plant has not had a bug on it. Not one. Yeah, the stakes are starting to get a bit mouldy. So it makes me wonder what, what the plant's in. The plant's happy, don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not repotting this because of any problems, I don't believe. Repotting it because it's too big for this pot. And the new growths are just going to flop out the side of the pot if I don't get on with this. And they're at the point now where they are pushing the new roots and now is the time. Um, this obviously is some um, one hell of a size plant, which it isn't going to stay like that I'm afraid. It's going to come down a peg and get split. Where it gets split can't be determined until it's out of the pot and I can see what I'm doing. Somebody suggested that next time round, when I get a shed load of spikes, I put a really large, strong, sturdy stake right up through the middle of the plant, just one in the middle of the plant, and then sort of strap, either using some thin wire or some raffia or something, all of the actual spikes to the central stake, so that it, it would be less conspicuous, and there would only be one stake instead of one per spike. That might not be a bad idea, but we'll have to wait and see. Right, that's the easy bit. <laughs> now I suspect, I know Sarah, and I know how she repots, I suspect that in this pot, 
is probably an inch or maybe even two inches of those polystyrene chips chunks things I'm not even sure this is gonna come out very easily I'm gonna try and get hold of some large older pseudo bulbs and just tug and I should hear the roots letting go which at the moment not a light oh, this is gonna be fun I might end up cutting this pot off it could be easier in the long run chances of me ever using that pot again are pretty slim because I don't have plants that big and um, it's not my pot <laughs> and I don't think this is going to come out otherwise so I'm just going to take the cutters down the side but one side and oh god massive roots in here this is going to be fun. Not. Right. Now you're going to let go of your plant now. Looks like it. Yes. More off we come. Well, there's our polystyrene chips. Plenty of that room in here. Um, but not as much as I thought, and quite honestly, that bark still looks fresh. Woo! It's top heavy now. That's out of the pot. Um, yeah, that bark's not that bad, and I can see active roots in amongst older, tired roots. So we've still got an active root system here. So I'm going to have to go around and collect up all of these polystyrene chips in a minute because they, they have to go in a separate bin. <laughs> all my um, dead roots and old pseudo bulbs and leaves go in a proper recycling bin now. Um, but it's got to be uh, a green based items that go in there. Woody things, green stuff, garden prunings old compost, stuff like that, that can all be chopped down and probably just turned into compost, not honestly. But not bits of polystyrene that don't break down. If you put that in, um, in landfill and go back in 30 years time, it'll still be there. Horrible stuff for getting rid of. Right. Well, we've got good roots all over the place here. Even down through the centre of the pot, there's good roots everywhere. What a nice plant. But, unfortunately, it's going to have to be split. Now, I'm not sure whether to try and do this now, while it's still got its root system on. I can see a natural split there. Let's just try pushing it apart and see what happens. What I'm trying to do really is find out whether this is really one plant or not. So I'm not sure it is. It could be several pieces that we'll put in here. Which means I don't want to split it and actually break it in a separate place apart from where it should break, if you see what I mean, because I, I could end up with a single pseudo bulb if I do it like that. Oh, I'm going to be here all day. This is not going to be easy. Because a lot of the roots have just wrapped themselves around the top of the pot, forming like a circle. I mean, I'm not worried about breaking them on the grounds that it branches and it's very vigorous and active. So some broken roots are not a big deal. It's more important for me to get this split in a suitable place. I'm working on this entry point here. Right, first job, ferns out as I come across them. Um, I'm going to plant these, I'm not, I'm not just going to throw them away, they're, they're nice looking ferns. But I don't want them in the pot with the plant. So take great care to take them out and I suspect next year we'll have some more growth. Because what happens is in, at Burnham's is they have got ferns um, and they don't mind them, but they seed and they get in all the pots. <laughs> um, it's one of the ways you can tell you've got a genuine Burnham's item. It's, it's got ferns growing in it. 
Right, that came apart where I planned on it coming apart. Sort of. And I can see one torn pseudo bulb. So this, I have split it. It's, it's come apart there, look. But that's the only place. So all of this piece I'm looking at now, including quite a nice big fern there. That's quite a nice one. To plant that up, I would have to take all the larger leaves off. Um, because obviously it's had its root system badly disturbed. So it won't grow on as well now. So we're coming over here. What we've got now is close proximity to some new growth. So I'm having to go a bit more careful. Now I suspect this piece is going to come off quite nicely. And we have a rotten pseudo bulb, a very old one. But um, yeah, that's that's a little soggy. Not bad, not, not gone. This one, that's coming off as well. For the same reason. It's old. And I think what I've got left, if it will tease out. With some nice growing roots. <laughs> you won't believe that. I'll show you. But um, this is the time uh, when it becomes a problem. This plant's been happy in its pots, grown well, it's bloomed well. It's long term happiness may be suspect. I've told a lot of the growers that you have got Fusarium in your nurseries, in your grow rooms. You should treat all of your plants, whether you've seen it or not, just in case. And this plant, if you think about it, because of the um, various issues I've had, this plant has actually already been treated once and its second treatment is coming round in a few days actually. Somewhere around the 6th I think is the next spray. So this will have had two fungicide treatments which in theory could have taken care of it anyway. But um, I'm going to cut that chunk out anyway. And that's a nice piece effectively with three new growths. And some new roots coming out. And a not bad old root system. Not bad at all. So there's piece number one. See now that could split again. I could take that piece off with its new growth and start a smaller plant. This is what a lot of the nurseries do. This is when they get a big plant they split it and they get as many pieces out of it as they can because each piece has a price. If their minimum cost of a plant such as this, a species Brassia, is say 20 quid, that piece is still 20 quid. That piece is 20 quid. That might be 25 quid because it's got two new growths. So you can see what I'm getting at here. The amount of money you can make by splitting a large plant because people will pay for it. Right. <sighs> What's left there? So I'm looking at these big... These are in the, it, these were in the centre of the um, plant, basically. So um, I'm not keeping these anyway and they're almost falling off. So this is the real oldest part of the plant back in here. And these pieces are, they're just coming off as easy as anything. There's no new growths there. So I'm quite happy for them to come off. Oh, there's the original tag buried in the middle. And we've got another fern here. Are you gonna come out? I don't think that one's gonna come out very easily. That one's too, bu too buried in there. Oh. I've already got two. So I probably won't even get them all. Right, so now what we've got here is the biggest part. Um, and it's got this row of new growths. One, two, three, four, five. Um, and that is it. That is the number of growths on here. Five. And that makes quite a large mature plant that will have five bloom spikes on it next time round. So I think I may try and keep that whole. Um, we've got good roots here. Um, I mean, the, the root system is going to get a hell of a trim. There's a branching root system. It's going to get a trim. 
and all of this that's wrapped around here, solid, is coming undone. It can't stay like that. Um, so it's got to be untangled and trimmed so that it... Uh, if it stays like that, the, the growing tips have got nowhere to go, and there are some, so that will get untangled. But that's, that's, that's not bad, that's, that's quite a good piece. And that maintains quite a mature sized plant. And that, that will be the basis of it. There might be a couple more back bulbs come off actually, because they're not they will only end up losing their leaves. But the way this was potted, some of these older bulbs were actually buried, which is why the base of them started to started to go. The older parts of the root system are just uh, coming off. So that's not a bad piece, is it? It would make two good pieces. If I could split that. This pseudo bulb has two new growths. If that was taken off with its previous, its predecessing bulb remaining attached, that would be a good piece if I was selling it on. Um, this would be difficult to split, but this pseudo bulb has one new growth, this one has two. Um, unfortunately, this one on the end doesn't seem to be attached to much. But I'm going to keep that as a single plant now. That's, that's going to stay as one. New roots will start very, very soon. I can see the nubbins where the new roots are going to come from, so it's going to produce a new root system very quickly. Right, oh, that's everything out of the pot. Now the bit that you don't see that is the most tedious part is cleaning all these plants up and trimming the roots off, getting any dead bits off, um, hydrogen peroxide spray in case there's any nasties, which will Bear in mind we had a little bit of that on the stakes. If any of that is lurking on the root system, yeah, then it'll get into the new media and probably take off again, so we need to treat them. And it's going to take me a long time. Um, as I said, I, I was a bit, maybe classed as a bit silly taking on such a big job in one go, rather than doing it separately. But it's one mess one effort and one big result so that's the reason i've done it that way so that's video one um, and the logic of this with a lot of the pots not this one this has just outgrown its pot that's a different reason altogether but most of those smaller oncidium types the media's gone and i won't say they've been in their pots too long They've been in their pots a reasonable amount of time, but the media's gone quicker than I expected it to. So they've come round quicker and almost caught me out, but I think in the main I've got them in time. Now in the old days, that wouldn't have happened. They'd have stayed in their pots because I used to be worried about disturbing the roots and this, that and the other. So I just let the roots die in stale acidic media, which I try not to do now. Um, and try and catch it in time and refresh the media. But the media they're going to go in this time is minus the moss. What they might get is their bark and their perlite and their charcoal, which helps keep the media sweet. Um, and the perlite will give me some aeration. The bark is just the bark that just does its thing, gives something for the roots to grab hold of. Um, and allows the water to pass through but holds some moisture. I don't think the charcoal and um, we can do without these can't we? Now I suspect that that's been sat in this pot nibbling at bits happily and not bothered trying to get anywhere else but um, I'm certainly not going anywhere else now <laughs> ever again slugs. Uh, especially indoors where they're not meant to be. I found a slug this morning in the middle of the lounge carpet and it just dawned on me how some of them are getting in. They're not getting in the grow room this way but they come in on Fluffy Cat where he goes out in the long grass and has a sit down and washes his paws the slugs get on him. 
and he doesn't necessarily know they're there because his fur's so long and shaggy and tatty at the moment. So I have seen them hitch a ride on Mojo, not on Elvis, but on, on Mojo, and that gets them in. Now normally they don't survive long at all because if they try and crawl on carpets and things like that, they just dehydrate totally and die. So they don't last long. But, um, you know, the cats used to go in the grow room quite frequently, so that's how some of them might have got in. So there we go. On the borderline of media breaking down, on its way out, telltale sign, a root system that looks quite good on the surface, but has stopped growing. There's no active root growth, and there should be. And also some browning, some discoloration, you know? So it's either the, a bad batch of the moss, or the bark wasn't so hot, or, or it, it was all okay and it just breaks down quicker than perhaps I thought. Um, the larger bark doesn't break down so quick. That's still doing what I expect it to do, but things like the holy clay pots and stuff. But um, yeah, so I've now got a massive kitchen sink session to clean all these up, trim roots and stuff like that. I will show repotting some of these. There's no point in me showing all of them. Um, they're all, you know, <laughs> this is a pot, some chunky stuff in the bottom. This is the mix in there, poke it down like that. You've seen it so many times before. Um, I mean, I might show getting something like this in a pot because of its sheer size. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be fun. To go very careful when you're messing with them, um, plants like this, these new growths are actually fragile. Even though they look big and strong, they're not. The, these bits can easily get squashed, crushed, get marks on them and damage that then grows up with the rest of the plant sort of thing. So they are still relatively fragile. They're unlikely to break off at that size, but they're still, they still need care. So I will get going. Um, I'm going to take a break from plants at the moment, make the holes in the hibiki pot and get that out of the way, um, have a break and then start washing in the sink. Probably clog up my sink for the next two weeks now. And I've also now got a shed load of pots to wash. It's another job. They don't, they don't magically get clean on their own, do they? And I certainly don't throw pots away just because they've been used. They get used again. And so do the trays, they get a wash before they get used again. Not because they've got anything on them that's wrong, they're just grubby. It's, you know, if I'm going to pot something up, nice clean pot, nice clean media, oh, nice clean tray as well. So we'll get those done. Oh. Right, and um, now I've got to pick out all this polystyrene and put it in a separate bin. That just goes in the kitchen bin, the landfill bin. Um, so that's the only place it can go. It doesn't biodegrade, it's, it's terrible stuff really. <laughs> but it does make reasonable things to go in the bottom of pots because it doesn't biodegrade. Um, so that's part one. Um, parts two and or three um, will be some of the repotting and showing what the plants look like um, after they've been washed off and trimmed up. Showing the state that they are when they go into their new media. I'll at least film that. Um, the actual repotting I might miss out. So this is quite a long one. Um, the others won't be as long. And um, what day is it? Saturday, isn't it? Do you know, I can't think whether I've done a video today or not. I don't think I have. So I might post this straight away. It's Sunday chat tomorrow. And then next week, obviously I'll need some videos for next week. I've got one already that's sat there filmed. It's actually been sat in the folder for two or three days now, um, but with other things going on. So I, 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 it's nice to have a bit of a backup of videos so that every now and again I can just take a couple of days off and not worry about anything and just post previously filmed stuff. So that's everything out of the pot. That was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> and it's not finished yet. I still got a lot to do today. We're coming up to, coming up to four o'clock now. I'm going to get rumbling tummy soon, but um, we'll crack on. And it's now like a like a conveyor belt. This to that, that one done, next one, next one done. It'll be quick. 
Um, but as it's in the sink and there'll be stuff going all ways, I can't film that bit. I just can't do that any sense. So I'll be back in part two with some stuff. See you next time. <laughs>